Dear God, and or grown-up baby Jesus, I may not exactly know how it all works, like what life is handed out to who and why, but the mistake was made pretty obviously not in my favor. Welcome to Slushy Shack. How may I help you? You don't have to say that every time, you know. Actually, I do. It's in the manual. There is no manual. Hi, Sarah. Hey, Reginald. Why would she waste her time on a loser like you? I was promised so much that I did not receive. Whatever down payment was made before I was born, ow, I want a refund. Reggie, have we met before? I believe everyone deserves a refund. Do you want to be ours? Reginald. You smell amazing. <laughs> the weirdest dream last night. No, you're not dreaming. You're a vampire. Whoa. Ah! Nothing changes until you feed. We can't just let anyone join our ranks. Monsters like you don't belong here. Whoa, do I know where? Reginald Andres will not survive the night. I want to drink your blood. Excuse me? I own the night. I'll pay you $25. $25 for my blood. $50, but we have to go to an ATM first. Now. Welcome all, welcome all, and ooh, spooky, spooky, spooky. All right, enough of that shit. We are talking about the extremely underrated sci-fi channel show, Regional the Vampire. That's right. Politically incorrect, very over the top, not too violent, just wacky, uh, Canadian-filmed um, production. It stars Jacob Batalon. That's right. You might know him as playing, once again, Ned Leeds in the new Spider-Man movies for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Even if you can't stand that character, he does extremely well here. The Filipino actor, you know, who was born in Hawaii, just shows a lot of charm with this. Also stars Mandela Van Peebles, who is the son of actor and director Mario Van Peebles, who you might also know from his work on Mayor of Kingstown. And uh, just a few other just bit movie and TV parts. All together, you know, this is just a really extremely uh, fun TV show. I look forward to every episode. I have no doubts going in and I you get exactly what you want. It's been, you know, I think other than like a few podcasts or like YouTube shows covering it, it uh, there hasn't been much coverage of it, but it's been a surprise hit for me on 2022 and easily one of the most fun just horror sci-fi shows. Episodes vary from TV 14 to TVMA, but, you know, it really isn't all that bad. IGN was so shitty in the review, acting like it was a fat shaming show. It's like, you didn't even watch the fucking show. You just wanted to get offended by it. You can tell the difference between a show that just seems to be douchey versus one that uh, uh, just doesn't seem to know what it wants to be. Either way, it, you know, it's just very straightforward and uh just uh, you have no doubt in your mind what you're in for and it really doesn't you know overstay its welcome every episode you're not going to find yourself fast forwarding or getting bored enough just lampooning of the vampire genre as well as just showing that you can just probably be witty and dorky 
instead of just having to have just sword fights and impalements and other just you know gore fests it is certainly one of the few that i can actually recommend because you know everyone's got their own version of what they want from vampires i am just like to the point where i'm just like just be entertaining don't try to be like Anne Rice and sure as fuck don't try to be like Twilight and at the same time you don't have to be like Lost Boys or Fright Night or Blade either you can just be your own fucking dill and altogether, it's just fun it really is quite a lot of fun it's very well edited sometimes the Editing's a little over the top with the electronic music and edits, but it never to where it's just too cheap. Like you're watching a lesser Canadian production saying it's shocking. No, it's very well done and it makes use of every episode. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Altogether, just a fun, fun time and uh, totally worthwhile. There's something for everybody. Uh, I just like how they're just getting into all various hijinks and even when they're making fun of how, you know, embracing the undead or sexual desires, it never gets to where it's perverted or sounds like it's written by douchebags. It's very uh, just uh, a well-organized, over-the-top excuse for a show. And it's a shame that it's just not being very well promoted and you know sci-fi channel you guys gotta get with it if you want people to give this a second season that's all i will say everyone enjoy it well worth your time 10 episodes you can't lose just have fun we'll return after these messages do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between goku and superman Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always, am I the winner? Yeah, not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America versus Darth Vader, Solid Snake versus the Iron Giant, classic matchups like RoboCop versus Terminator, and even the Muppets versus Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts, or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. We let things pile up in the DVR. We add them to our queues. We wait for the DVDs and Blu-rays. We time shift. The Time Shifters podcast. Sci-fi, horror, fantasy, superheroes, comedy, action, film, television, maybe some not-so-current events. Find us on iTunes or at timeshifterspodcast.com. Cool thing about Blind Knowledge is we are in multiple countries. We are worldwide all across the globe. We are in the U.S. We are in the U.K. We are in Canada, Germany, India, Japan. We're in Australia, y'all. Blindknowledge.com. Now back to the feature presentation. Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, Naruto, all things that we love, all manga that were originally published in the legendary magazine Weekly Shonen Jump. But not every series can run for 300 chapters and have a hit anime. This is David. This is Jordan. We're the hosts of Shonen Flop. Each episode, we look at manga that ran and jumped that didn't quite make it. We discuss what it did wrong, what it did right, how the series could have turned itself around, and ultimately, was it a flop or not? Run all your favorite podcast apps, and you can find us at shonenflop.com. Keep on flopping, floppers. Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up.